Today on Earth Focus, how sea level rise affects the U.S. coastline. Climate scientist Brenda Eckwurzel on encroaching tides, a new report by the Union of Concerned Scientists. Coming up on Earth Focus. Climate change is essentially warming our atmosphere, and that's warming the ocean, which causes it to expand. And it's also shrinking the major ice sheets on the planet, which directly contributes to sea level rise. And it's accelerating, especially over the past three decades. Since 1880 to about today, we have global sea level rise of around eight inches. What we did in our analysis with our encroaching tides report is we projected into the future to the year 2030 and 2045. And by 2045, we could see as little as five inches of extra sea level rise or 11 inches of extra sea level rise. In other words, in 30 years, at the high emission scenario, we may see as much or more sea level rise than it took us over a century to rise. And locally, what we see is the United States, the eastern part of the United States, from the Gulf of Mexico all the way up to New England, is among the highest local sea level rise rates in the world. Places such as Cape May, New Jersey, Annapolis, Maryland, uh, different places along the East Coast, several of them are experiencing high tide flooding that is twice a month right now from the climate change we've already experienced. It's become nuisance flooding for these places. And so what we're seeing is the infrastructure of our sewage outflow, our benches, our bridges, which ships have to go underneath and navigate, they're experiencing much higher levels during the high tide. Our infrastructure is not ready for the pace of change we're talking about. Coastal communities have choices that they're going to be grappling with. Some may choose to stay in place and figure out ways to make their communities more resilient to sea level rise such as raising the houses, figuring out some sort of natural barrier, such as rebuilding wetlands, beach dunes, whatever the choices are in the local community. Other communities may choose to retreat. There are communities in Alaska that are choosing to retreat from the coastal region. And other cities may decide a combination of these. I think more and more the public understands the truth about climate change and that if we do not deal with this problem, it will be far worse. Some places will be very unpleasant to live and some places will be uneconomical to live. And that is the reality of climate change. Enough experts know, the science is clear, we have the solutions and we don't have to leave this up to individual choices anymore because Lack of knowledge on this issue should not be a reason for the choice which we're doing right now, which is inaction. We're choosing that every day. I remember when four hurricanes hit Florida. It happened to be 2005, the year of Katrina. The private insurance industry wanted to leave Florida and government entities had to step in. Right now we have the taxpayers as the ultimate flood insurance insurer because right now you may live in the middle of the country and not care about sea level rise, but you're paying for it because FEMA needs this disaster money and that system is broken. We need to create a climate resilience fund to be smart about protecting our coastal communities and protecting our pocketbooks as taxpayers so that we're making wiser investments. Right now, the flood insurance program encourages people to live in harm's way, and that's not very resilient. We are looking at some communities that are putting in climate action plans that are on the scale of millions of dollars. For example, New York City is thinking about over $350 million to try to make New York City more resilient to sea level rise. Essentially, the cost of adapting to sea level rise is huge. And the cost of reducing emissions, putting the brakes on carbon pollution can really save coastal communities and buy extra time everywhere. 
And that's sometimes the cheapest option. Put the brakes on carbon pollution and allow coastal communities to invest wisely in the infrastructure that will deal with climate change of the future. Every local community is going to trade off between how much money you're going to spend on adaptation and what many communities are going to find is that there are limits to adaptation and if you had a slower pace of sea level rise, it would be more affordable. Global emissions reductions help the United States immensely because we are one of the places that is dealing with sea level rise. Airwaves, a global channel of uncompromising stories. World news, documentaries, entertainment, and culture. Link TV, connecting you to the world. For more information, visit linktv.org.